I've got to sit down for this one. I don't even know what time it is. I think it's like 8.30 or something like that. Uh, my, my wife and kids just came by and we showed them all the drawers and kids were going crazy playing in them. Oh, shoot, I guess I don't need this pen light for now. But I've been uh, polishing for basically two straight days and the car is now ready to, to put the uh, fun part, which I should enjoy, but I'm a little beat. I got SEMA coming up. Uh, I'm leaving on Monday. Today's Friday. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, I don't really have a lot of time to mess with the car. Uh, so uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to be or be able to, to, to do this whole process. So I've just got to suck it up and, and do it tonight. Uh, but what I'm going to do here now in preparation for the, uh, the protection step is I'm going to wipe the car down with the racer. And uh, what I might actually do, just to make this a little more palatable, I'm going to wipe down each surface as I apply the sealant to it. Uh, and then we're going to do a three-step process. I guess it would technically be four steps if you count uh, when I add the, the, uh, the, the protection on top of the protection, uh, which is going to be bead maker in the end. So here's the plan. Wipe, wipe the car down. I like using these lower pile. Uh, red is what I denote as my sealant and wax removal towel. Uh, but I'm going to wipe the car down with Carpro Eraser. So we'll probably wipe the front down and wax it, or, or seal it, I should say. Uh, and then you know, work, work my way back and do, do each step. You know, we'll do each panel one section at a time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put Menzerna. I keep saying Menzerna. Uh, this is a little different formulation. This is called uh, Jeskar Powerlock Plus. It's a little thicker, a little bit different polymer, uh, but this is a little different product than what you'd find in Europe in Menzerna Powerlock. Uh, this is a polymer sealant. Uh, what we're going to do is put it on the paint. So put it on the whole entire car. By the time I get done with the whole entire car, I'll be free to wipe it off. And I'm telling you, this will change your life. Uh, the removal of this is like nothing you've ever seen. I've never experienced a product like this, the removal of it. A Sonex polymer net shield is pretty cool. Um, you know, like I've used uh, Jet Seal, Black Fire, Wet, uh, what is it called, Wet Diamond. Uh, I probably used a dozen or so polymer sealants in my life. Uh, there's something about this that's just different. Uh, and it's just amazing. And I, I actually like the fact that I've got to wait three hours for it to cure to really fully set up before I put colonite on uh, because then I get to run the back of my hand and drop a towel and watch it slide off the panel. I'm telling you, uh, those of you who have put this on or followed my advice on this or have done it on your own in the past, this will change your life. So we're going to do a single layer of this. So I'm going to do that tonight. Uh, so I want to get that done even though I'd rather go home and sit on the couch. I'm going to get that done here tonight. Uh, and I'm not going to put it on the windows. I'm going to put it on everything with the exception of anything rubber. And, uh, and then we're going to let it uh, wipe it off and then I'll let it cure so it'll have more than three hours. It'll have 10 or 12 hours. I'm hoping to run over here in the morning before uh, Ryan and Michelle leave. Uh, Ryan has a football game, but uh, Kate doesn't do so well at the football game, so I'm going to keep her at home. So I'm going to run over here before anybody wakes up, do a, a layer of colonite, remove that, and that way it can sit and then hopefully Sunday come over here and do the last layer and then work on the glass and all of that stuff. And then I've got to take the center section exhaust off because we're doing a swap. I've got a dining in middle racing exhaust coming. So that's why I'm just toughing it out here. I've been here since uh, 6.30 this morning. So I, I, uh, I quit my job and now I have a business and here I am uh, working way harder than I've ever worked in my entire life. Uh, I'm working harder now than when I had two jobs, when I had Obsessed Garage and uh, my wealth management business uh, in making these videos. I'm having a blast, but I, you know, as with everything, I'm all or nothing. So now that I'm all in on Obsessed Garage, it's like a bonanza of crazy. And uh, I've, uh, luckily, I've um, gotten the people that are working for me, uh, they're not here. Or otherwise, I'll work them to death. Uh, so, so uh, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this this process, and then I haven't decided exactly when. Uh, what I'll probably do is uh, again I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the colonite on. It's gonna sit here for a week when I'm at SEMA without an exhaust on it, uh, and then when I get back, uh, I'm gonna drive it, and then I'll probably. I probably won't put the bead maker layer on until after I've washed it for the first time because a lot of times the colonite sweats and comes to the surface. 
So anyway, I'll sit here and talk all night. Let's get moving. Uh, Adam's hex pad, hex hex grip pad, and then our power lock is what we're going to use. But first, let's wipe it down. Okay, so I'm going to leave this lower. So let's do the hood first. So I'm going to spray this down with a pretty ample amount of eraser. I'm going to get the polish oils off of here so that we can get a solid bond. And I'm going to do this whole front clip just so I don't end up with a lot of overspray. We're going to do the headlights as well. So obviously I want to take care because I just spent half of my waking life over the last however many days dialing this sucker in so I don't want to damage the now corrected surface or any chance of that happening. So I may end up coating this car in the future. I don't know, we'll see. But for now, I'm going to wax it because I haven't decided what coating I would want to put on it. I've never been so indecisive in my life. I really want to get the R8 back and do a wash and drive on that so that so that I can really see. I really liked Crystal Serum Light, as those of you who like it told me I would. But I really enjoyed the use of the product. I actually liked how it looked. You know me, I'm such a coating cynic. I just may well put that on this car later on. Stay tuned for that. This blue is like next level when you get it corrected. Now I can't wait to see what it looks like protected. Because when I had this car, I wasn't as astute as I am today. I wasn't doing polishing at the level that I now am able to do. One, I didn't have a, I didn't have a Rupes. Two, I hadn't spent time with Cooper Ryder, Yvonne, look, Ivan LaCroix, Levi from the Rag Company, Mike Phillips, um, Jason Kilmer, Andy Ward. I spent time with Jason Rose, some of the best polishers in the world. And so now my skill set is much, much better than it was when I had my first M3. So we did that section. Now let's do the fun part, power lock. So we don't need a ton of this product. We need a reasonable amount. So let me get a little closer so you can see here. So I'm just gonna, this, this already has some on it, on the pad. So just put a little bit on like that. That's more than I'll put on the rest of the time, just to kind of get it primed up again. You know, doing more doesn't give you more protection as with pretty much any kind of wax or sealant or coating for that matter. You just need coverage. So as long as I get a even layer of coverage, then there would be no reason to add any more. That just makes it harder to get off. Wasting product, wasting time. But I do need to get it kind of primed up here so it's not dragging anywhere. So this process generally takes me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half per layer. You know, however long I can get all the way around the car like I'm doing here. But this part kind of stresses me out because I still have to do the windows, the trim. Still have to, oh, the thing that's nice about this time, I don't have to really deal with the wheels because the wheels are jacked up. So stay tuned when I make the decision on wheels and then I'll be coding those and taking you through that process. This is going to be a never-ending M3 Bonanza videos. So if you don't like the M3, I'm sorry, this is going to be bad. So just ignore the M3 and uh, just think detailing. Lots of detailing, lots of parts and pieces going on this sucker. You know, this was a California car 
and uh, now a Florida car, and I've look, kind of looked at the underside. So I really didn't need to do any kind of under undercarriage care. You know, I don't, really don't need to take the wheels off and clean the suspension or anything like that. It's just not, there, I don't have to deal with salt and chemicals and things like that. And you know, the car didn't have that where it was because it was a Los Angeles car. So shoot, it, you have better weather, weather out there than we do here. When I do the suspension, whatever I decide to do on that, I will likely clean it up a bit. Again, we're going to be doing single layer of power lock. I've never found the need to do more than one. The, the basic idea here is that this layer is our better bonded, so theoretically this bonds better with the paint than the colonite does. So. So here's the beauty of having a lift. I don't have to bend over. So this layer bonds, quote, quote, better with the, with the, wa with the, with the paint. And then the wax, for whatever reason, that wa the colonite wax tends to bond really well with the, with the polymer sealant. And I've actually done it in the past where I didn't wait three hours. So if you're pressed for time or working outside and you just you don't know, have the ability to just lay, leave it in the air conditioned garage, I mean, I don't really I don't really think it needs that much time to set up. But I don't know. That's what the bottle says. The bottle says to, to let it cure for three hours. I don't know if that's tested or that's just a recommendation an educated rec recommendation, but it seems like a good idea. It makes sense for me because a lot of times I'm doing it like this where I've done some sort of crazy marathon and now I need to wait to do the next layer because I've run out of gas, I've run out of energy. But I'm telling you, this stuff just works. Is this the best product in the world? No. Is it a really great happy medium? I think it is. I don't know what the best product in the world is though. So if you're looking for that answer, I'm not sure. There really isn't. For this car, this is a this is probably the best product for me. I enjoy doing well, I don't know that I enjoy doing these marathon multi-step corrections, but I enjoy doing a maintenance correction. I like the fact that I can just pull this off the car and start over, that I'm not, you know, stuck with it or I have to compound the heck out of it and hope and pray that it comes off and never know if it actually really did come off. So then the next layer of whatever I put on the car may or may not stick. Of course, I'm referring to a, a typical glass or ceramic or whatever you want to call it, a silicon dioxide coating, titanium dioxide base type coating of some sort. So I like the fact that I can just strip this off, do something else. So I knew when I, you know, when I was going to set up the store, I knew that this would be the one of the very, one of the first products that I would feel comfortable recommending to people. It's just good. It's really, really, really good, and it's really relatively inexpensive in comparison to some other options. You know, you'll have this bottle for the rest of your life. I've said this many times. I've dumped more colonite on the floor than I put on a car by accidentally tipping the bottle over. This is all a little bit surreal though, working in this garage. This latest vision that I've had for what OGHQ would be. I had, at one point today, I had five, five visitors here, all at the same time. It's just incredible. I can't wait to continue to grow this and you know have an open door policy so people can come in and experience it and I hope to continue to improve the videos I think I hope you start to see a slight change or slight not change but slight difference in how I'm curating them and I'm working on I'd like to make them better better video quality better angles better tutorials, 
but I like variety. I don't want to do the same thing over and over again, even though you know I do quite a bit of the same stuff, the same stuff I'm usually doing on different cars. And I, and I promise you, I'm not buying these cars for you. I'm buying the car for me, and then I'm just sharing it. Okay, so that's the that's the Menzern. I did it again. That's the Jeskar Power Lock application. I'm going to go around, wipe down each panel individually, start from the top, work my way down, and uh, go and do do the entire surface. Then I'll come back to you, and we'll uh, we'll both uh, wow together at how amazing this stuff comes off. It's just it's just great, absolute greatness. Uh, so uh, I'm going to get to this. I'll probably be back, and uh, this will probably take me another four thirty-five minutes or so to do this part. Okay, now comes the best part part that I've been waiting for all this time, wiping the power lock off. Oh yeah, there's nothing better than that. I'm going to pull this off. I should pull it off earlier. Colonite really doesn't, I don't tend to get it on this stuff, so it doesn't really become a problem. So this product, if you've never wiped it off before, it'll change your life. comes off smooth as silk and then oh man it leaves the sur a surface that's unexplainable I'd like to leave this by itself and I've done that before but it doesn't last very long so this by itself without the colonite the top on it I mean you get a, a month if you're lucky but yeah that's just it's just amazing it's so good so just like normal I started here, and I worked, all, I worked on the roof, and worked all the way around the car, and now I'm able to wipe it off. It really doesn't matter. I mean, if it, I've had it on here for an hour before, and it still comes off just the same. You just want to leave it, let it cure, let it set, then remove it. So, I, you know, I found that you know, at, least, at least 10 minutes before you take it off. So I, I've never done this as a wipe on, wipe off. It's a wipe, put on, let haze over, and then remove it. <laughs> Look at that. That's just, that's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Let me zoom in here a little bit. I lost my cameraman. This is legit, dude. So legit. Yeah. It's awesome. Wipe off the front bumper. Oh man, but I tell you what, this is why I, this is the main reason why I can't handle having a bunch of cars. I will enjoy every second of this process when I'm done with it. When I'm doing it, I, it's like, why did I, why did I choose this weekend? I should have waited till next weekend. I never wait and I never have time. It's like never, you're never gonna have like this, like where I have you know, a week, week to work on it. I never have and probably never will. And so there's, it's always, I'm always pressed to do it at some point and always do it when it's, when it's the least convenient. But when it's done, I always find it to be worth every second. And Michelle's gotten good she, she kind of knows when this is going down, what's going to happen. I always tell her, yeah, it's going to take me like a day or so. <laughs> it takes me four every time. So she's gotten used to it. Uh, it's laughable how insane it is. There's just nothing else. Like No coating can do that. I'm really pleased with how the roof came out. I'm going to have to either repaint the trunk or do some different trunk because the there was a dirt nib that that uh, had been sanded and you know, the clear coat had already started to fail and then as soon as I polished it there was a spot where the clear coat failed and the paint for whatever reason it's not as great as the front end so it must have been painted at a different time but it, it, it certainly looks like it's been painted. It just looks different. The color's pretty spot on, but it looks different. From most people's perspective, I'm sure it's fine, but as good as this car now is and is becoming, 
it's, it's not going to be good enough. The trim turned out okay. Again, I got the trim to like 80%, 75-80%. We'll get this this uh, this rubber dialed in here next. That'll be something we'll work on. So here's my failed spot. It was just such a different experience for me though, where I was pleasant. I would be pleasantly surprised, so that doesn't bother me as much because this is a used car, and so all of the I, and I looked at it more like glass half full than I do glass half empty. When you buy a new car, you expect it to be perfect, or you want it to be perfect, and it never is. And then I bought a used car, and I expect it to be ruined, and it's not. And then when I'm able to correct it out and, and kind of perfect it, it just it's just a pleasant, much more pleasant experience. So maybe, maybe used cars are the way to go for me. You get this pretty... Pretty insane static buildup from how slick the paint is, especially in here where I've got the relative humidity at like 30 something percent. I just look down the side of this thing when we get this wiped off. I'm so pumped. Feels like all is right in the world. Can't wait to take pictures of this car. I actually treated the jams here. I polished, I don't think I showed this on video, but I completely polished the door jams as well. I only single step them with Jesscar, but I did polish them. And then when I do the keyhole cover, I might look into taking the door handle off so I can do a quality polishing in there because that's the, that's a really rough spot from people reaching in and fingernail scratching. I've been so preoccupied with this, with the M3, Forgot my RS is out there. <laughs> it's been out there all day. I mean, I literally haven't stepped outside. It's coming up on like probably 9.30, 10 o'clock. All right, I'll wipe the other side down and I'll come out, hand hold the camera and walk you around just to show you what this looks like before the color night goes on tomorrow. All right, so let's do a walk around here. Car's looking fantastic. Turned out even better than I thought it would. Looks so good. Looks even better with my cabinets. So that's what it looks like with the first layer of power lock under the lights. Front bumper looks fantastic. I don't know if you can see this here, but there's a little bit of hazing that I can't get out, it's like failed or I don't know. I'll probably just buy some new ones. Headlights look good. The car in general just looks great. Let me put it down so I can show you the carbon fiber roof. I'll put the, uh, show you the back here quickly. The exhaust looks fantastic. I hope I can make it work. It's just the perfect setup. But I'm holding on to the dyno exhaust just in case. So there it is. First layer of power lock. Super legit. Even though I'm a big uh, opponent of showing cars on camera and talking about the result, I think you can see a difference between what the car looks like and what it looked like before. So here's my failed spot. See, you can definitely see that. See that in the light right there? So that's no good. Just in general, it's kind of pocky. But from here, it looks fantastic. So that's it for today. I guess I'll see you in the morning for uh, Colonite uh, 845 application. And then we've got to do the windows and trim. So. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's the next morning and the car's had time to cure and I've already walked around it about 37 times with the back of my hand. It's just awesome. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is top the polymer sealant with a Carnuba-based wax, because this is colonite number 845. Uh, this is Carnuba-based that has some added polymers, some secret sauce. 
that uh, is uh, semi-solid, semi-liquid. And uh, I'm using a, a Adams Hex pad that I've been using. I already used this once before, so you can see there's there's product on it. I don't wash or clean these. I just leave them in the cabinet uh, because they maybe blow it off or dust it off. I, I blew this off just to make sure there wasn't any dust or dirt sitting on top of it. But you can reuse these over and over again. There's no reason to try to wash the product out. It's not going to come out anyway, uh, especially the especially the power lock. But this, much like the polymer sealant, what we're going to do uh, less is more. So what I do is I just take it and squeeze it. I know lots of people will put a sprayer on here, but I don't see the need to do that. We don't need that much product. So this works. I just kind of squeeze it and put a little bit on the on the on the pad like so, and, uh, and, and do my thing. Right, so let's uh, let's put this down on the car show you we'll start right here and this goes this layer goes on even smoother because we have the polymer sealant the uh, the Jeskar power lock underneath and the surface is so darn slick that this just goes right on like butter whereas you may have a little bit of grabbiness with the power lock beforehand you know on the first layer because hopefully we'd removed almost all the polish oils, so we get a good bond. And then we just simply go and make circles. This, you know, there, there are many different options to do on a car, right? We can do, or on, on this last step. I mean, there's all thousands of choices. And I've used 50, 100, I don't know, I've seen lots of choices and this this option we get reasonable longevity you know even though this is an ancient technology an ancient product we get reasonable longevity out of it we get a really amazing look so so I get a very similar look to something like a Swiss Vax Concorso or a Auto Finesse Desire or some other wax, you know, traditional Carduba wax, paste wax. So I get that look, but I get a little bit more longevity and I get a little bit more protection out of this product than I find that I do on, on a, you know, a traditional, even a higher end Carduba wax. So I've left this and come back many, many, many times. And I just find myself keep coming back over and over and over again. Part of this with this car, this was the car I discovered. Well, maybe not. This is the car that I had topped in this combo for the, the, the time that I had it. And so, I don't know, I just felt like it was the right thing to put on it. Uh, and then maybe, who knows, maybe I'll code it later on. But for now, this is, uh, this just makes sense. I'm going to do, I got new wiper blades, but not blade arms. Looks like I'm going to need a new one because this one's a little beat up. I'll add a little power, a little power locker, I'm sorry, 845 to the blade arms. You could also put the wolf's trim on that, but I'm going to wax it. So let's bring the front end up, take you through this full front end here. So the other thing that's going to add to longevity of this combo will be the topping of bead maker. And so I'm interested to see the uh, longer term viability of continued application of bead maker on top of this carnauba wax. It was interesting the comments of Dave Phillips, you know, he he kind of stated that wax and bead maker aren't a particularly great combo, but yet I'd experience some really great a great look and then hopefully great protection longer term. So maybe we can we can get more time out of our hybrid wax sealant combo. At least that's the that's the intent. So, you know, we'll see. 
I'm gonna live it, test it on this car. And then, you know, maybe maybe after this application, maybe we'll, we'll do a crystal serum and EXO or something on it, I don't know. Or maybe I'll just have to convince Michelle, Michelle to let me get another car so that uh, I can uh, test more, more products, which I'm not gonna do. What I'll likely do is keep doing, when I have a new product that I really wanna try out, I'll just get somebody to bring their car to me and we'll do it together. You know, I get inquiries all the time, so maybe, uh, maybe the universe is telling me something about, hey, I'd like to come drop my car off to have you detail it. And I don't, I don't, I don't know how you guys that do this professionally, I don't know how the heck you do it, man. I'm doing this car, it takes me freaking four days to do it. Now granted, I'm getting interrupted, there's people coming here and answering emails and doing all kinds of stuff in between, so I'm not focused, but well, my guess is most of you that are detailing for a living are the same things happening to you. So I would think you'd have to have somebody else to help you out to keep on track. Otherwise, you'd have cars. It would take you four days to do a single car. And then I've, I've posed this before that most shops aren't able to do. Not, it's not this level. I don't want to say this level, but they aren't going to go to the measures that I would go in spot treating the car and doing the door jams and doing all this extra stuff unless they're charging accordingly. You know, even even the Jim Whites and the esoterics of the world, you know, they're going to have to, topaz, they're going to have to draw the line somewhere and how meticulous they can be. Otherwise, you know, the pricing is going to have to be so insane that no one's going to pay it or very few will pay it. But I'm guessing there's some that do or some that are interested in you cleaning the engine bay with a toothbrush. So I'm going to go through and apply this to the entire car and then we'll be wiping it off. And then I'll come back and we'll, we'll take you through wiping off and then we'll have to do a second layer of this later on. So as usual, I start here, work my way around and then when I come back then I'm able to wipe it off. And because I put a thin layer on, I don't have to beat the crap out of the car to get the stuff off. So then, you know, when you look at the depth and clarity that we get, we lose a little bit of the slickness and gain some depth from the, from the power lock. But notice, it comes off really easily. Unlike a traditional Carnuba, which you have to kind of buff off, this comes off pretty nicely. And then this blue is amazing. Even though this has been repainted, it's funny because the, the, the hood and the front is really decent. The back is kind of janky. So I'm going to have to redo the trunk. But it's weird because the, the, they must have just painted the top of the trunk because the bottom of the trunk is uh, not bad. What are you doing, pretty? So I'm going to go through and wipe off the whole car and uh, we'll um, come back and conclude the finishing step. I keep saying that, we're going to have to do a second, uh, second layer of, uh, of colonite. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, the floor, the floor. 